Okay, well, today what we're going to talk about is 4, 6, formalizing relations and functions. So basically, just defining what everything is. Um, the first objective is to find or to determine whether a relation is a function. And then we're going to talk about domain and range and function notation. Okay, so our standards is A1.1.1 and A1.1.2, which is basically representing data through charts and graphs and words and then identifying range and domain of functions. Okay, so the first thing is we have to understand what a relation is compared to a function. And we talked about a function before uh, being basically a set of every input matching up with one and only one output. Well, a relation is really everything else. Okay, it's, it's really a function is a relation, but everything's a relation if it's a pairing of x and y values. So basically, if you say a coordinate 2, 3, and you give me another coordinate, 5, 4, just those two is a relation. That's it. That's all you need. Okay. Um, so a function is a little more detailed. Domain, so this will be kind of a word that might be new to you. You might have heard me say it around the classroom, but domain is a set of inputs. So we said that inputs were x values. So I wrote there again, typically x values. Um, range is a set of outputs, so what will you get out when you do your work? Okay, so domain is what you plug into the function, range is what you get out after you evaluate it. Okay, and again, that's typically your y values. Okay, so we're going to talk problem number one, which is identifying functions using mapping diagrams. Basically, this is fairly simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take these x and y values and we're going to map them now what we're going to do is we're going to write domain, and then we're going to write range, and that's what goes here. We're going to put our domain here. Now again, as we said, domain is our x value, so it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is say negative 2, 0, 4, and 5, all our x values, boom, 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 and boom. Okay. If there was a duplicate, say there's another negative 2, I would only write it once. Okay, You only have to write it one time each time okay, for each problem. Now, the next thing you're going to do is go to your range, which again, range is your y values. Okay, So we're going to write 0 0.5, uh, 2.5, oh, we got a little crazy there, and 6.5. And what you'll notice is that, again, we had a duplicate on our 2.5. There's two of them. So we only have to write it once. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an arrow from every one of my domains to its appropriate uh, y value, its output, okay, its range. So I draw an arrow over. The negative 2 was the 0.5. The 0 was the 2.5. The 4 was to 6.5. And the 5 also went to 2.5. So by definition that we talked about, a function is when we take every x value, every domain, and we compare it with one and only one range. So again, negative 2 goes to the here, only 1. It doesn't go anywhere else. 0 goes to 2.5. It doesn't go anywhere else. 4 goes to 6.5. It doesn't go anywhere else. 5 goes to 2.5. It doesn't go anywhere else. So this is a function. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, the uh, 0 and the 5 go to 2.5. But that's fine, okay? I can only have one arrow coming off the zero. Now, if the zero would have gone to 0.5, now we have an issue. Okay, so we can't go to two of them. We'll see that in a second here. So again, I'm going to come over here and say domain and range. And I'm just going to go through the thing again. So I'm going to put six, four. Well, I already have six, so that one can stay there. And five, so I had six twice. Now I'm going to write five. 3, and if you want to write these in order from least to greatest, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't really stress out about that. I know some teachers say, well, it has to be smallest to greatest. I, it's, you're going to map them anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but we're going to go through this process as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 6 goes to 5. So far, so good. 4 goes to 3. So far, so good. And I'm going to skip one here, but I'm going to say... Uh, 5 goes to 8, okay, but we run into an issue right here because 6 branches off and comes down to 4. Okay, So right here is the issue. 
we had five, or six going to five, but then six also goes to four. Okay, so like over here again, we had zero going to 2.5 and five going to 2.5. That's fine. But here we had two branches off of six. Our domain can't have any number having two branches coming off it. So therefore, this is not a function. It's just simply a relation. Again, everything's a relation. So this one's just a relation. That's it. Okay. So we get into the next thing, which is going to talk about the vertical line test. Now, again, the vertical line test is, as we do in mathematics, for whatever reason, we don't try to be real nifty about how we name things. Vertical line test is that we have a vertical line, straight up and down, and we use it to test a function. Okay, so we look at some points. So let's come over here and I'm going to go in blue. So we go negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my point negative 4, negative 4. Okay, my ne negative 2, up 3, negative 2, 3, 3, 0, and we have 5, 1, so that's 3, 4, 5, 1, and then 6, 1, right there. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a vertical line. Now you can use a ruler, a book, really a lot of things can work here. Um, let me see, let me get my cursor. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the vertical line to test. Now as I go through, the rule for the vertical line test is no matter where I place this line, I can only touch one point at a time. So as I scroll back and forth, you're going to notice that the only time I ever touch the blue dot, they're singly touching. They're never touching two points at the same time. Okay, So because that occurs, we would say that this is a function. Now let me show you what would happen if we did touch another time. And I'll put this in the red to show that, hey, it doesn't work. Okay, so I have a point up there. In red, as I touch here, only touches once, only touches once, but when I get to here, what happens? Oh, now I'm touching twice. Okay, one, two. That would make that not a function. Okay, so that was an added point. So if I were to add that point in there, now this relation would just be that. It's a relation, not a function. Okay, because it touches twice there. Okay, so let me see here. There we go. I'm going to erase that one. And we're going to talk about this one here. Now, again, you can do oops, you can do an XY table we did in the other section. Uh, we did this in the graphing section. And you can pick some points here. Again, pick positive, negatives, plot those points, and you're going to see what this looks like. Now, just to kind of quickly graph this, um, we're going to be up 1, and then we're going to be at 3 in here. Okay, and I, I'm just putting this because I know what it's going to be. You pick 1. 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3, boom, there's that point. Negative 1 will produce the same thing. So I'm just basically cutting some corners here for you. As we go through, we draw that. That's what our graph looks like. And again, we're going to come over here and pick our vertical, t vertical line and again, test this out. Now this can be tough because sometimes your graph won't look as neat. And so it's going to look like it touches twice. So it really becomes, do you know what the function looks like? So as I scroll across this, I never touch twice. Now it may look like over here I'm going to touch twice, but this is branching out. So the farther I go right, the farther up I'm going. And this way, I'll keep going this way. So this one indeed would be a function as well. Okay, so we had two functions there. Okay, A circle, just to throw some ideas at you. A circle would not pass that test. A vertical line would touch once, twice. So that's just another example. Okay, so the, let's go ahead, and before we go on, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. We'll get in and we'll start talking about function notation in the next video. I'm going to break this up a little bit. Okay.